Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Town Talk Podcast. Today I got Bundy and Jay Skip with me. How you guys feeling? What's happening? What's happening? Feeling good. Feeling good. Come on. Glad come to be on. back. Come, come on. on. So yeah, Likewise. shoot. We're going we gonna to get into it. Reacting to this documentary that came out about 20 years ago about our family and kind of like the, the whole of Jimi Hendrix estate. So we're going to get into it. Yeah. Let's make sure I got my comments over here so we can see. I've always just heard about it, so you know, it's definitely some meaningful to me. Like, but yeah, I'm really excited big. to watch this with you guys, especially because it's you know our great grandma, you know, and she practically raised this. So yeah, that's facts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So let's slide. Y'all help me remind me of the music and all that too. Oh, sorry, y'all. It's just for the little countdown right here. The volume will be cool. Jimmy. 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 I turn it down when his music plays, sadly. Yeah. It's copy rights. Yeah. Mm. Why. <laughs> <laughs> Man. The sun play. We gotta hear the words though. It's my legacy and my heritage. From my father, yeah, from Jimmy, you know? Oh, it's a DNA good. thing, you know? I am the heir apparent. Carlos Santana once said to me, there are two kinds of people in this world. There are artists and there are con artists. Which are you? There's something about this legacy that whoever becomes know the <laughs> king of the mountain, so to speak, who's ever controlling the legacy seems to fall into this pit, this greed pit. truth about the good music though come on the originator so we think that what it is within three decades jimmy's music has become a business estimated at at least 150 dollars and hardly a year has passed when the lawyers went wrangling over the proceeds in my research i found that it's the most litigated and most expensive rock and roll well, estate rock, other than the beatles Approximately $40 million has been spent in legal fees alone fighting over Jimmy's legacy, which is really a very remarkable number. <sighs> but when he died, Jimmy had only £20,000 in the bank. Jimmy grew up in a poor suburb of Seattle. His father, Al, and his mother, Lucille, split up when Jimmy was nine years old. His little brother, Leon, was just three. The neighborhood's not changed much, and their mother's old house holds powerful memories for Leon. You know, I'm feeling lovey right now. You know, all lovey, all snuggly and lovey. Because I remember, Vegan like, house. Used to take, Mama used to really love us. And when my father and and mother couldn't get along, we would end up staying with our, our mother. My dad was haul us off down here, and we'd be happy. Just like the old times. CD. Heading for the park. That was my bedroom right there. There was only one bedroom. So I used to sleep with my mom, and Jimmy used to sleep on the chair. Leon used to tag along in the early days when Jimmy was a backing Someone guitarist, often playing in the local hall. Washington yeah. Hall. This is where I used to come and see Jimmy. He used to say, You guys uh, performed there. This was probably when I was still being babysit it by Jimmy him. Before before it. Jimmy would take me and drag me along. In the early stages of his career, 
Jimmy was always in the background, but he was hardly destined to stay there. They used to hire Jimmy on Friday and fire him on Sunday because you couldn't practice with him. Because he was, during practice, he would, he would do something strange and he'd go, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I just had to do it. Then he put a fellow on his guitar one time. And he said, oh, no, Jimmy, you're fired. This is a uniform band, and you can't have feathers or anything hanging off your guitar, you know? Jimmy's big break came in England with the Jimi Hendrix Experience, 1966. Jimmy personified the 60s lifestyle, and for the little brother who followed him on tour, it was his first taste of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I was at the Beverly Hilton Hotel. You know, Jimmy got me a suite there. Had my own limousine. I was 17 years old, so I was, like, lost already. I was gone. And all these girls are coming up. You know, and they had to contact me to get to Jimmy, right? So I had a good time. You know, I was like, whoa. <laughs> but then I open the door and see somebody that appeals to me, you know. Well, like, first of all, thinking about the white trash person, I say, what in the world is she doing here, you know? Or what does she, you know, want or something like that? I stand and she says, oh, maybe, can I come in? And I'm standing there and really digging her, you know? She's really nice looking, you know? We went backstage, and uh, uh, the first thing I seen was a big bottle of Johnny Walker, right? A, a sack of weed, and it's... I said, whoa, you know. Jimmy didn't hardly touch that stuff before he played, you know. And all, I only seen him do weed and drink. You know, I never seen him do the other. But I got happy with it, and I said, whoa, cool. So everywhere I went, I always expected to have drugs. Early town. <laughs> While Jimmy was touring Early. the world, back in Seattle, his dad was moving on too. Al Hendricks remarried and adopted his new wife's six-year-old daughter, Janie. Jimmy and Leon had a new little sister. I remember standing there waiting, and he was the last person to come off the plane. And everybody hugged and cried tears of joy. And each time he came back, he would spend time with everyone and um, share with them what was going on with his life, because he Ellie felt he was missing times, out so. in our lives as much as we felt he was this fabulous, you know, star that um, was so sought after. He was very humble in that way, that that wasn't really as important to him as his family. Jimmy. Jimmy. Who's this Jimmy? Jimmy Hendrix. Jimmy Hendrix. Jimmy. 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 Who's this Jimmy? Jimmy Hendrix. Jimmy Hendrix. Just a little Jimmy. more than a fortnight ago, Jimmy Hendrix appeared before 200,000 adoring fans. Today, another hit from the crazy nightmare world of pop music. Jimmy died at a hotel in 19... This is the part I got copyrighted for last time. <laughs> so I, I know I got to do it right there at least. Jimmy was not. I remember that the day that we Jimmy got the lies. News, my father came and scooped me up like Batman and carried me into the bedroom and um, told me that life won't be the same. Leon right there. Jimmy was only 27 when he died and he hadn't left a will. The family was united in grief with no hint of the millions or the disputes to come. When he died, he actually was not that well off. He was close to destitute with as many debts as he had assets. Jimmy's father, Al, a landscape gardener with little education, was sad. I know they didn't release this type of business. He's the only one that's not in. The legal issues and the business issues that surrounded that were frankly always just above his ability to cope. And so he had to rely on other people always throughout his life to handle that for him. Step forward, entertainment lawyer Leo Branton Jr. Well, Dad and, and Leo were, were friends, and Leo was our attorney, and he fully trusted Leo as his attorney to handle the affairs. While Branton took care of the business, record producers took care of the music. As the years rolled on, millions of records were rolled out. Al left them to it, 
no questions asked. In return, he got an annual salary. I told him one day, I said, Dad, uh, wait a minute. They, you know, they're saying Jimmy's making like five, six, seven million dollars a year, and you're only getting a hundred grand a year. And he goes, well, Leon, you don't understand the music business. And I said, I must don't, <laughs> you know? And so we kind of got an argument about that. And so I would call Branton and let him and talk to him about it. He said, oh, Leon, don't worry about it. Uh, in fact, I got a good deal for you coming up. The deal was to sell the whole Hendrix business to record company MCA. But to do it, Alan Branton needed to buy back some music rights from Leon and Janie. So in 1990, Branton offered them a million dollars each. I said, oh, yeah. I said, woo. <laughs> and he also offered this to Janie. Right? Uh, I accept it. <laughs> Jenny went to an attorney right and said, well... Okay, I gotta pause it right there just to talk about this. Stuff. I was I'm reading this book, though, too, by... What was her name? Uh, it's right here. One second. Because it's important for this part. Uh, uh, yeah, the book, the <laughs> book Jimi Hendrix by Sharon Lawrence. It talks about how... Al, they kind of tricked Alan and making Leon sign that way before, and then Janie had the time to go and think about it first, and then go get lawyers and look over it again and va value the estate again. It's some crazy stuff, but keep watch. My dad doesn't seem to have this much money, so how can I make sure I get this million dollars? That's when she first got an attorney. Leon got his million, but Janie decided not to sell her rights, and her attorneys unearthed a host of deals Al knew nothing about. It took four months and stacks of legal documents. And he could clearly see that his estate was mishandled. That's when things changed. That's when he filed the legal papers for the lawsuit. Al and Jenny needed a financial backer. Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen offered his help. A lifelong Hendrix fan, Allen was also conveniently the fourth richest man in the world. The lawsuit was immensely complicated with years of legal wrangling. There are shells in the courthouse door groaning under the weight of paperwork and evidence. We don't get many cases this large. The longer the case is drawn out, the more documents that are filed in the case, the more pieces of evidence that are filed, the more the attorneys and squabble over little bits of evidence, you know, the bigger and bigger the case gets. It's crazy. They, they did a good job of hiding all this. So, so. I used to have this on vinyl. Yeah, we need to uncover all this for sure. Lawyers were all set for the day in court, but the trial didn't get far. The music rights case was scheduled to be heard in federal court in Seattle, but now with the settlement, a trial won't and be necessary for Jimi Hendrix's father to <laughs> gain back the rights to his son's song. Well, it means great deals of the family. For one thing, I got the legacy, my son's legacy, and that's what main thing I wanted. We have everything. We have the legacy. That means everything that has to do with Jimmy. It now has come home. won the business back. At this point, it was said to be worth around $80 million. When Al Hendricks won the rights to Jimmy's legacy back, everyone kind of thought it was done. Finally, the rights were reunited with someone who was a Hendrix. Al was 77, ill, and in no position to handle the business on his own. From here on, you know, from 96 on, my father appointed me as pre president and CEO and my cousin Bob as vice president. So it was like we got on, and how much do we know about the music business? Not much, <laughs> but we learned. And they learned fast. They launched a new company, Experience Hendrix, and in the eight years since, they have remastered Hendrix classics and issued previously unreleased material. With concert DVDs, films, and memorabilia, it said the company has doubled in value. What it's worth now, I think there have been numbers put out in the press of 150, 160 million, which certainly puts Jimmy's estate uh, 
up there uh, among the very top tier of dead musicians, I hate to say, but, but that is Crazy. in fact the category. Hundreds of millions of dollars and the family can't be taken care the of. The Jimi Hendrix industry has not been without its critics. Some of the merchandising they put out with Jimmy's name on it, in my personal opinion, a little over-commercialized. They put out golf balls. They put out a rocking chair with Jimmy's face on it. The idea to do a bottle of red, even non-alcoholic wine, when Jimmy died from drinking red wine, that was part of the reason for his death, seems to me to be uh, short-sighted, if nothing else. <laughs> Accusations of crass merchandising were minor compared with the damaging events to come. Events that would threaten the very fabric of the Hendrix family. In 1999, Al Hendrix published his autobiography. In it, he stated that he was not, in fact, Leon's father. However, 12 years earlier in his will of 1987, he named Leon his one living natural child. We know the truth. Leon and his lawyers claimed Al's allegations amounted to defamation and that, furthermore, his sister was behind it. He sued. Jenny's been telling my father that I'm not his son. And she came I have a birth certificate. When he was like in his That 20. says Al is my father. He's been my father for 55 years. You know what I'm talking about? And the Bible says, he who raises a child is the father. So, Though Leon oh clearly gosh. believed that legally and morally he's Al's son, Jenny's lawyers challenged him to prove it genetically by providing a DNA sample. Eventually, Leon dropped the defamation case and agreed to take a DNA test, the result of which, for now, is under wraps. Last year, the story took another turn. So I get a phone call from Leon, and uh, he said my dad died. Leon is supported by his own big money backer, Seattle property developer Craig Diefenbach. Leon was pretty upset. Uh, he became even more upset when Janie wouldn't give him uh, a call back, and Leon was, was not able to participate in the funeral as far as the planning of the funeral goes because he had no contact with Janie. She wouldn't call him back. Uh, we had to use attorneys to talk to him. Leon's handlers, uh, attorneys, manager, whatever you want to call them. Bro, why is he hating so much, bro? <laughs> he died. The, the very day Al Hendricks died. Leon's lawyers went to court to secure a copy of Al's will to reassure Leon that 25% of this state would be his. But what they discovered was something entirely different. Here it is. Here's Leon's inheritance. In fact, this is his whole inheritance. It's a souvenir gold record, and uh, that's it. You're looking at it. He yep. gave it to me to hang on to. Uh, he was. Uh, it's at the academy. When he got it. Yeah, it's at the academy. I grew My up dad rapping next to it. Had always, <laughs> you know, took care of his grandkids. Those are my children, and me. He said, Leon. I, you're in the uh -huh. will, it's all okay, everything's uh -huh. all cool, you know. It was in one document that we would get, me and my children would get 25% of the whole estate. Gee, I was honey. happy with that. Dad said everything's yeah, all right. But that's not what happened. Al Hendricks's various wills and trusts that he's executed over time uh, have changed from a concept where there were a number of family members that he wanted to benefit, including Leon, to a situation Gentle. where for all intents and purposes, Jeannie Hendrix controls everything. Every since it's been a, uh, it's been downhill for me, uphill for her. And of course, as part of that, Leon, Jimmy's brother, is out totally. Jeannie blames Leon. Through the years, Leon basically alienated himself from our family. Leon. I mean, but he can alienate himself from the family, but you can still take care of the. Where's the, the next family at? Like the actual no. bloodline who, who that's paying the pockets. Man. Really, who alienated who? Who's the real Hendrix? Exactly. Who, who's, who's the, the real, real blood? And this guy, Bob Hendrix, he, he, he actually has our blood, but man, you just kind of disgraceful. He's he's the son of the brother, older brother of Al Hendrix that was been passed away for a long time. But man, and this is twenty year old documentary, y'all. Yeah. Uh, Made other choices in life. 
that Al Hendricks would not have made. Well, technically, you know, I get everything. He, he, he cutting on the other side. Drinking. He, to us, he's not a black relative. I had some bad times, and, <laughs> and uh, I guess nobody realized about that. <laughs> and has reinvented Jimmy's himself as a rock guitarist. Mm -hmm. I need no feedback. Come on, baby. Shout out. Man, OG it's like Leon. the world. It's like, it's like Jimmy's with me. I have a bad day unless I call on him. And I said, well, I need to call on the evoke the power. Leon's following in his brother's footsteps. Rather late in life, he's 55 and only picked up the guitar in earnest a few years ago. This is the Leon Hendricks Mysterious. That's the name of our band. The Mysterious, because nobody ever knew I existed, even my sister. She said, where'd you come from? But <laughs> well, she can be in no doubt now. Mm, good job, Leon. Leon is stepping up for a fight. With money and lawyers from Craig Diefenbach, he's taking on experienced Hendrix, Ginny's empire. Leon is going to the courts to have Al's will overturned. <laughs> So far, Craig's put over $3 million of his own money behind Leon's claim that Janie, not Al, was the real architect of the will. All the time they were using him as a token, just to, just to be there, and all the time they were like con conspiring to manipulate this whole estate from that time, when, they, when, uh, when my father gave her the power to do it, because my father trusted her. You know, we expected that Leon would inherit a substantial portion. There's a comment down here, the artist one. That was not Leon or Jimmy Jazz. I don't know, I don't know but what you're talking about. But we got the bloodline because we come from Lucille. And Jimmy and Leon came from Lucille, so that's all that matters. Yeah. The mad German. Yeah, where's uh, where's grandmother's the part? <laughs> Jal has told Is him his whole up? life. And, you know, you know everybody yeah. was going to get what was justly theirs. Bob the Hendricks and Janie are living the life of luxury. And the rest of the Hendricks family are living in reduced circumstances. It doesn't seem fair. Exactly. Living in reduced circumstances, hundreds of millions of dollars. And the real talent, we still on our own doing our thing. Fair to me. What we've alleged on behalf of Leon is that the will really doesn't represent the true intent of Al Hendricks, but instead represents the result of, we think, fraudulent influences and definitely fraudulent has been applied to Al to alter what naturally would have been his intent. He had suffered from a life of alcohol abuse. He was hospitalized several times. Uh, so we believe the evidence will show that he was quite reduced in both physical and mental abilities at the time that the decisions that are critical to this case were being made. My dad had his own mind and his own will and his um, own understanding of life. Janie never interfered with Al's intent. Uh, she wasn't even involved at all in the preparation of the wills or the trust. She had nothing to do with it. My father trusted her that she would do the right thing. And he told me many times, he said, uh, don't worry, Janie will take care of it. You know, Janie will take care of it. But Janie don't take care of nothing but herself. This isn't about money or fame. This is about a spirit. Okay. Really? And you guys met three that's times when you were nine years old and he was spirit. 26? Come on now. Take the spirit Come away from the now. family. It's not about the we money. Then why are, you, back, why, why are you putting him on golf balls? Why would you want his yeah. face on a golf ball getting hit on a golf tee? Come on now. <laughs> Who's spirit? It's about a wonderful man. And instead of rejoicing over his life, there's fighting over what someone's gift expectation is. It's published oh, as autobiography. Know. Oh, well, then he's... Oh, no, 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 no. no, no. Uh, Expectations. Yeah, we're getting there. No, I was trying to pause it because someone in the comments is saying some stuff. You mm. talked to Leon a couple of weeks ago. We talked to him all the time. He's on the show. Check out the videos. Yeah, man. That's dope. <laughs> the public image of the Hendrix business is of a family-run enterprise. But many of the Hendrix family feel excluded. Oh, the whole real actual there she is. Feel excluded. The head mama Come of the Hendrix clan. Come on. Hello, honey. How are you, dear sweetie? Grandmother. Dolores, Ooh. Al's former sister in law, was central to the family when Leon and Jimmy were growing up. This is the, the I took lady. care of him when he was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's grandmother. 
Yikes. <laughs> and they, they're trying to say former sister-in-law, but still the sister of Jimi Hendrix's mom. Come on, Sister-in-law? Man. No, that was her blood sister. No, that's not, no talking about Al's sister-in-law. But they're, oh, they're, they're, they're yeah. saying a word, trying to say it's a lost connection, yeah. but that's still a bloodline. And Jimmy both, the whole mm-hmm. family, in fact, <laughs> all the kids yep. in the family. Al and I were on good terms up until a few years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yep, everything changed, you know, mm-hmm. when he got began to get ill, I guess. Mm-hmm. He didn't really quite know what he was doing, but he had always promised me that he would take care of our family, always, because I had taken care of his. There's other God people in control of the state right now that don't even acknowledge us. us. So yeah. the truth will come out. Yeah. Man, we still trying to get the truth to come out all these years later, man. We got to do it. Damn. <laughs> she can't even oh, be well, buried Jimmy's by happy her. now. Yeah, Jimmy's He's happy. up there where he always wanted to be in the cloud. She's trying to join him, man. What's up, bro? Talking about no vision? That's a right handed guitar. It's not even turned upside down. You see what I'm talking about? They don't even know the man. Yeah. They don't talk about D. Come on. Super you guys. fake. Come on, Jenny. What's up? Last year, Experience Hendrix moved Jimmy's body to a new mausoleum. Al died before it was completed, but Jenny saw the project through. She took it upon herself to move Jimmy in the middle of the night on his birthday while we were all having a party. I came here to pray over Jimmy's grave, and I found out it was empty. It was really my dad's vision to have a place for Jimmy have a place for himself a year prior to his passing. So wait, it was your, it was, it was Grandpa Al's vision to have a place for Jimmy and himself, but not for his son, his other son, Leon's other son, Leon's kids and family, the rather bloodline. Every day. It makes no sense. He asked us, when will it be done? She never talked to me and told me anything about it. She never did include us in the real things that they did. That's what we, you know, feel bad about. It really hurt us very badly that we were treated that way. To make family matters worse, Leon's been told there's no room for him or his family at the site next to Jimmy. But Leon's legal battle with Janie may benefit his relatives. His lawyers have uncovered papers that show Al set up trusts for them years before he died. So what kids, we've discovered yeah. is that even though these trusts were established in 1997, None of the beneficiaries that we've talked to have received anything from the trust. Diane Hendricks is Leon and Jimmy's cousin. The lawyers claim her trust could be worth more than $12 million. All I know is that I've never gotten a penny from it. (laughs) That's all I can say. Whatever the truth is, the truth is gonna come forward. Whatever, whether it's good or bad, just be prepared. So why didn't the trust pay out? It's Leon's four lawsuits that have frozen the ability to pay anything out to the trust or the estate until Leon's claims are tried and adjudicated in court. It's our contention that these trusts are simply sham transactions really intended to vest total control of the company in Janie. Leon intends to prove it when he meets Jenny in court next year. This has been a very divisive thing in this family. I've, I've seen in my own eyes, you know, brother against sister, cousins that don't talk. The Hendricks name is a family that, you know, really should be something that, that should be a calling card. Though for some members, the family name is anything but. Leon's daughter, Tina, is a hip hop artist who started her own record label. Of anybody I've met in the family, she's one of the people that I really say, there's some talent here. She potentially could have a serious career doing what she's doing, but she's on the side that isn't running the Jimi Hendrix legacy, and so in some ways the name has actually been a curse for her, she says. We are the biological relatives of Jimi Hendrix, and I think that that's something significant and special. And um, I'm proud to have that blood, and when it comes down to it, I think that that's more important than having the money, really, because, you know, it was the blood that made the money. Thanks. 
Tina's brother Alex and Jason are also rapping for her label. <laughs> if I die suddenly and some of my stuff turns into hits, I hope that you know. I thought my cousins. I hope that somebody doesn't come along, marry my family, and then. Hold on, yeah, let's talk about that. Hold on, one sec, one sec. We gotta pause it for a second. Like, literally, like, like, I skipped to say we grew up thinking like our family was really famous because of the talent we had. Like, I did ask brother. Being in the studio, rapping, all this talent. To school, and they were all vibing to it too. Everyone's vibing to it. Like, I just like all this talent's being like we're being shunned and hidden. Like, how you feeling, Wendy? Like, it's uh, you already know, man. They going the truth gonna come out. Everybody know it. Come on, man. So you can't hide talent. <laughs> we trusted people, and I think that if there was a lesson to be learned, it is that you really can't trust everybody, especially when the issue of large amounts of money is involved. For Leon and his family, that large amount of money could be as much as forty million dollars. Let's be honest, okay? Leon is Jimmy's brother, okay? He true. does deserve his birthright. There's enough money for everybody in this world. You know, I'm sorry. You know, you know the get the everybody can get this. I hate that I have to mute my own uncle's music. You see, know, it, it sucks how you can pause it real quick. Because technically, a lot of the time, you know, we couldn't even, like, listen to his music, like, as far as, like, purchasing it. Like, you know, just basically having that to ourselves, like, you know, that we were giving money to somewhere else. Yeah. You know, supporting, you know, we have to live through, like, not supporting our cousin. Like, we can't do it because, like, buying a t-shirt, that is Experience Hendrix. Yeah, like, we don't do it because, you know, it's against, like, you know our morals like because we have to like you know if we can't support that it's not supporting the real family, exactly the it's problem. not mm -hmm. it's not coming towards the real family like you know and we got to tell people that it's not coming from the real family type thing you know it's a constant battle and, for sure and it's a constant battle just seeing it you know people who wear a lot of hendrix stuff who really want to support and it's like you have that just against you like I can tell you I'm a Hendrix, but I'm not really getting no benefit out of it because, right? You know, all I have is the bloodline talent. All I have is the bloodline that, talent. Is that vibrancy, that charisma. To it. And you know, of course, yeah, the, what comes with it. You know, what what we all got. You know, that it factor. You know, we all the originators in what we do. So I mean, when it when it comes down to it, I mean, shoot, that's that's what's gonna make the truth come out. You feel me? For real? Yeah. Like, yeah. Shoot, people not gonna be able to. Deny the fact that we have Hendrix blood. That's what I'm saying. Like I'm saying it, it's going to get to the point where we're, we got too much of a platform where people can't take a blind eye to it. Where, there, where it's, you know, eventually it's just going to stir up the pot so much to where, you know, it's 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 more than us, you know, yeah. after, you know, it's, it's a whole community. Everybody wants to see us get that final, final, you know, legacy in that, you know, birthright Come is on. what she was saying. Because, you know, with that type of money, we could actually move mountains. With, you know, what our family has already done for the community with what little we had in money. You know, yeah. just doing nonprofits, giving back the way that we have, like, you know, just yeah. still being local. Who knows what we're going to do with that money? The thing yeah. is, it'd be crazy, man, because we could really give back so much to the community. That's what I'm saying. So much, man. Wonderful music legacy. Why are we having this, this big role? And I and I want to say to all the fans out there, you know what? I wish I knew too, because I don't think that we should be having this fight. And as far as land goes, um, right? <laughs> bro, you're supposed. To, that's what I'm saying, like, bro. Hey, no, no. I really want to pause it right there, because, bro, how can you actually share our actual the actual bloodline? Because you know, you're, I guess you're related to you know Al Hendricks, but it's like, dude, how can you say that and then be okay with your bloodline not being taken care of? That makes zero sense. Like, man, you, you lost yourself along the way, man. That's tough. The thing mm -hmm. is, like, when you got hundreds of millions of dollars, like, and you don't even want to take care of your actual blood. And they're, yeah. and they're only owed 25% of that. It's yeah. like, come on. It's not about money. Like, bro, you don't 10 even, million, that's yeah. less than taxes, dog. Yeah, come on. <laughs> come on, now. And you're talking about that. It's not about the money, but you're capping. The prodigal son now. Um, I do pray for his soul. And for his own sake, um, I'm happy for him. 
I am are, Jimmy's brother. How are these not fighting? And that's all I care about right now. <laughs> and I have the DNA, and I have the music, and I have the legacy and the heritage. Well, and I'm going to carry it on. And that's why all the biopics have sucked. I think that all the biopics have been trash. Yeah. Well, I mean, she, I would she sure wish that there would be a day where it would be over. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if she releases it, you know, of course it's going to make it. I've like been it. hoping that, I think, only, for 33 only years. The only true one we've seen is when one lawsuit Malik plays another. Jimmy, I play <laughs> Leon. <laughs> Come on. Hey, if we get that in we do it. We do, we do, we do that. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll play him to T. That's something that <laughs> yeah, everybody would actually tune into and, and be the reality of it. You know, the true story to the fullest. Yeah, I mean, should, as long as it's for the fam, that's that's what I'm for. You know, Man. family. Cause that's what I'm saying. Honestly, it's a damn shame. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but no, here show this show this book to the camera. I've, I've been reading this book, and it it, it mentions oh, yeah. it mentions in the book that's Jimi Hendrix by what, oh, Sharon Lawrence, camera. and in the book, y'all. Oh, oh yeah, let me get this one this right here. So show to the uh, Sony one right here. Oh baby, yep. yeah, y'all. What that fuck is it? Give it a second. It'll get it. All right, back it up a second, a little bit. But it's Jimmy Hendrix by Sharon Lawrence, y'all. And, like, in the book, it talks about how Jenny only met him a couple times. There's recordings on here where Jimmy himself, it's just a transcribed print of his, his recording on tape, his words, talking about how he, him, how Janie and her mother, June, were acting real shady about the money and all that. And he didn't like to talk about business, and they were all focused about that. So it's a lot in there, y'all. I got to tap in with that book. But, yeah, so much going on. What's your guys' initial reaction? Because, you know, I watched it on VHS before. You know, I put it to, I transferred it over so we can never lose it. How, that's your guys' first time watching it. How do you guys feel? I mean, in all honesty, like, I've already heard all the stories about Janie. And, you know, seeing it just puts everything else into more perspective. Because it's like, you already know, like, she was on some snake shit. But, like, yeah. seeing it from, like, a, a video from, like, what, 20 years ago? Yeah. Ain't nothing changed. I mean, <laughs> at all. Like it's the it's the same stuff. I mean, but at the end of the day, just like they were saying in the in the video. I mean, I know it's been twenty years since, but still, like the truth is gonna come out, and I think it's gonna come out a lot sooner than people think. Yeah, a lot sooner, y'all, for real. Like the fans, yeah. once the fans know, that's that's all we really ask for. We want them to know the truth for sure. Yeah, for, for real, for real. Because I mean. My initial reaction, obviously, I hadn't seen it, but I, you know, I had heard about it. And um, just the way that they did it, obviously, they, Janie, they got Janie to exaggerate a lot on, like, the visits and the photos and stuff. They didn't show enough of our photos, like, as far as him with the family and stuff like that, you know, him yeah, with, like, yeah, real Alberta, quick, skip. him Foot, with, foot to know, the middle of that book because in there... My grandma. Yeah, in there, it talks about your guys' grandma. She took all the f pictures in the middle. Like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, foot to the and middle. They didn't the, talk middle about the middle that. has the pictures. And they, know, they the should have... Sh I feel like they should have probably interviewed, you, like, you see your name in there? somebody because, you know... On, on the pictures. Albert is actually his, yeah, the closest in, you know, Jimmy's age. So, I mean, that would have been someone pretty dope aside... I'll move it a little bit to this side because that's right in front of light this way a little bit. Yeah. All right, that's, yep, right there. That's Lucilla right there. And Jimmy right there as a baby. Lucilla mm -hmm. again. Jimmy and Leon. Come on, all these pictures in the book by by Sharon Lawrence, they say, taken by Dolores Ham Jeter. Their yeah. grandma, come on. Our family, yeah, our bloodline. Taken by grandmother. <laughs> yeah, shoot. But, I, uh, yeah, like I said before, my great grandma, like, that's how close the connection is. People always, like, kind of, like, discredit you for being, you know, Jimmy's relative because, you know, it's so far away in the family tree. It was so long ago that he passed away. You know, how can a family be affected by that? But, you know, stuff lives to this day. Like, our family carries on that legacy where we always have that remembrance of our family members, you know, especially that played a significant role, you know, in being there and, you know, being within the family, staying within the family, growing up in the family. So, I mean, Jimmy was no different. And actually, like, you know, seeing it more and more, you know, in life, like, you know, kind of making the connections because, you know, as a kid, you really don't pay attention as much. You just, 
kind of shrug it off, you always kind of like, you know, agree with him. Like, you know, it is kind of far away type thing. But now seeing it as like I'm grown and I'm turning his age that he passed away at, you know, I'm seeing it as, you know, what it is. He was raised by my great grandma, you know, just as I was, you know, because my mom and dad, you know, had growing up to do, you know, with a whole bunch of kids and I was a middle child. So, you know, I spent a lot of personal time with my great grandma all the way up until she passed almost, you know, where yeah. I was coming over in high school and just chilling with her, you know, cleaning her house and stuff like that. Yeah, me and my mom would always go drop her off food For or real. clean up her house. I would just go chill out. She would babysit me too. We'd just be chilling. Like, I'd be posted so, there. I mean, that's how close the connection is. You yeah. know, it was decades later that, God bless you know, her, I was soul. raised. God bless her. But it was the same person. You know, I'm pretty sure he experienced the same person because, you know, she was, oh, as you know, seen in the video, fact, she was, she was who change. she was. But yeah, she, nah, man, she, she, she did a lot for me. Song. Yeah, she um, did a lot for us. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm forever thankful for it. And, yeah. She, she had me excited to uh, to bring my report cards over for a few dollars. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's I'm what like, I'm saying. I was school, always. Middle school, man. Yeah. I used to always take them over here. Yeah. Come on. Facts. She would yeah. always hang our pictures up and everything. It was, it was it was dope growing up with her. What else stuck out to you guys about the documentary? Like seeing it for the first time, having that bloodline, and like being older now when it, when it was made. You know, when you guys were babies. Um, I think like seeing it now, like you know, I don't know. It was it was just more of like like I said, like it was like. You you got to you got a hint you got a taste of the true story like you didn't get the full experience of Jimmy's visits in Seattle Jimmy's yeah. like connection to Seattle you got it you know you got that obviously that you know he passed away in, in well in that's London just about and, the legacy for real but if you yeah. I want you guys to read that book after I finish these last yeah. couple of pages of it because it talks about like how Jimmy felt about Seattle and a lot of that too and yeah just, exactly it, it talks a lot about his relationship with Janie too and a lot it's it's supposed to be the most accurate Jimi Hendrix book just exactly. because. A and lot that, of it are his recordings of his voice that a reporter was, you know, following him around on tour and recording his voice. So it's a pretty and, good book. And I feel like they also should shed a little light on, like, the other, like, Seattle musicians that he had a connection with. Because there were a lot of people who, like, you know, were outed were and feel like they were outed when, you know, especially Janie got the inheritance and she didn't allow pe certain people to get shows and stuff like that because, you know, they knew the truth. You know, they knew that yeah. Leon deserved was deserving of a lot of things, especially having his birthright. So, I mean, like I said, there's a lot of people already fighting on our side. It's just not at the global or national scale that we needed to be at to really have that firepower. But we already yeah. do have a lot of people in our arsenal. The people that grew up with Jimmy, you know, are feeling the same way that we felt. Like, you know, they see us as family and we've grown up with that, you know, having that love throughout the community. Like, you know, Jimmy's... And Tori is saying, when the power, when the love of power, when the power of love overcomes the love of power. <laughs> I keep, man, yeah, he was a visionary for that. But the power of love he was talking about is a family. You know, that's the that's the best type of love you can have for somebody when you see them as your brother and your sister. You know, aside of of course having a spouse, but. You know, as seeing as someone as your brother and your sister, you know, like I view my cousins as my brothers and my sisters. Facts. You know, yeah. it's just having that deeper love and deeper connection to where you have that trust to someone. You know, that village built up already. You know, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's the, that's the real power that he's basically left, you know. That's given like, us just you know just, made all yeah. of us giving us that charisma yeah. that that ism just yeah that, it's, it's it's all that aura. like we're, we're all we just move we just but move through society in a different exactly. way exactly sure. and we've spread it through the community and we spread it through our friend groups and we've spread it to you know just anywhere we've been in college and stuff like that you know in different places that we've worked at and different places we visited like you know even if it was just for a second type thing like we just leave that impact and yeah. having that vibe I mean. It can move mountains, and we're just hoping that we just get to that skill where everybody can see that, and everybody knows and, and that we're and support deserving the causes, of this. Support the causes that we want, yeah. because you know we just want to help like yeah. the community. We exactly. want to push musicians forward for real and create resources for musicians. You know, so, facts, all that facts.
Yeah, shoot. I think we're after this video and shoot, just all the all the other information that's really out there that you know that people can really find and stuff. It's like the truth is gonna come to the light, Thanks. you know, like a lot sooner than later. Cause it's like I mean it's it's hard it's hard to keep it hidden for so long. You know, generations have passed. Like yeah, like we got musicians in the family now where it's like. We, I mean, it's great to have the Hendrix name, you feel me? Like, especially his blood, because it's like our talent, it just runs through us. But it's Undeniable, like, sure, once yeah. we get to a certain level, it's like... People it's start undeniable. to question us, yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, they're not going to have no choice but to see the truth. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Man, you know, that heavy video for the fam, you know, it's, it's hard to watch that. It's, it's tough, like, it's, it's all, like, it's different films, so... We gonna yeah. keep it light for y'all. We gonna we gonna, <laughs> we gonna convene as ourselves off away from the live stream and just <laughs> hey, shout out another wavy Wednesdays, y'all. How you guys? Hey. We we have Bundy here, J Skip, real Hendrix relatives, the bloodline, come come on, Jimmy man. and Leon. Come on, shout out Leon, shout out Tina Hendrix and the Music Academy. Come shout on, out. get the book, get, get that the book. book, find out the truth, man. Find out the, the truth, truth man. man. Come on, is it here? Jimmy Hendrix by Sharon Lawrence. Yes, yeah, it's, it's right there. I, I can I can zoom in a little bit more right here. Right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boom. Oh, easy. Come on. Come on. It's by Come Sharon on. Lawrence. Oh, my bookmark fell out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bet. Right, yeah, sure. All right, we out, y'all. Come on. Peace.